I figured it out. I know exactly what this is now. I was trying to think to myself, what the heck am I going to call this video? What is this thing that I'm doing here? This is the most simple finger drumming setup and it's fully customizable, custom mappable, and with an added bonus, you get an amazing looper pedal in the process. That's 808 right there. Control the volume of track one and track two. Drum sounds, there is so many. If you wanted to go a little higher here. The LED lights are pretty dang bright, so that's that's an added bonus. Uh, this is the Boss RC500 looping pedal, or, or loop station rather, and this is the Launch Key Mini MK3 with lots of dog hair on it. And you know, I get these ideas in my head sometimes. I'm like, I wonder if the Boss Looper can do that because this has some crazy advanced features, and it absolutely can, especially with MIDI. This is a MIDI controller with velocity sensitive pads and a bunch of knobs. This is a looper pedal with a drum machine built into it that has really advanced features. Uh, let me show you what I've been doing with this. Okay, so I've been practicing. Uh, I'm getting better. As you can tell, my time isn't quite as good as like a real drummer, but I'm getting there. And yeah, so I've got this thing fully mapped out how I want it to. And that was possible through the Novation components that this comes with. Uh, you gotta plug it into the computer and custom map things. But that's how I'm able to get the bass drum here. I wanted the bass drum here, two snares. In this specific sound set, this is two different snares giving it a little more realism. As you can hear, velocity sensitive. Uh, I wanted some toms here so I could do a little bit of that action. I got uh, a stick there so I can get that going. That's a clap. That sounds better in the digital sound, so not necessarily this sound. That's another thing. This is the, the Boss R, the drum sounds are coming through the Boss RC500. There is, a, this is a Roland product, you know, they've, they're have they very famous for their drum machines. They're, they made the 808, I guess, um, you know, drum machine, the really common drum machine sounds, which they have on here. There's, I think like 10 different drum groups uh, that you can use. And this one right now, I have been working on a setup for my looping setup. I got a tuba and a looper setup uh, with a bunch of guitar effects. It's really fun. That's on my Bone Zone music channel. Uh, I don't have anything currently, but I've been working on some stuff. So check that out whenever it appears magically. Uh, I'm not sure when that's going to be, but I'm having fun with this right now. So... Let's see, what else? Yeah, I got... Anyways, back to what I was talking about, custom mapping. I got cymbals, hi-hat, some random percussion, and some, some ride cymbals there. The reason I did this is because I wanted to, you know, I wanted things to lay comfortably. So by default, it's kind of all over the place. You know, you gotta. So, like, so by default, it's kind of all over the place. I don't even know where anything is, but you can make your own custom mode. And um, 
you have to figure out what MIDI notes control what, and then you can input it into the software. But that's a really uh, long, interesting uh, video that I probably won't ever do <laughs> talking about that because that sounds like a lot of work. Because it was, it was, it's easy enough if you know what you're doing, which was cool. And once you get it to work, it works flawlessly. But yeah, I, I wanted my uh, thumb to control the drum. And then I wanted my two fingers to control the snare. So I can kind of do a one-handed thing there. You know, if I wanted to do clap. I could do that if I want to do stick. Bass drum, very important. And then tom so I can roll into the bass drum. And I have it laid out here. That's very comfortable. That's just kind of where my hands land. And then I have two different snares, again, adding a little bit of realism. Mm. You know, it sounds a lot better than the same snare. Sounds a lot better with two different snares. So that's my right hand. And then my left hand, I've got, uh, I always like some crash cymbals for, for bigger sections. Again, you got to figure out where to map those. This is a, uh, and oh yeah, the colors, of course. So I've got these, this has choke groups on it. If you know what that is. Um, and I, you know, I custom map those to be red. Let me change so you can see the colors a little bit better here. All right, so now you can see the colors better. So like I've got, I've got the um, the hi hat. I've got the hi hat choke group right here as red. That way it's easy to see. Here I've got um, you know symbols. I know which two different symbols, two crashes. You know, pink and more pink. I guess you know my little percussion. Those are uh, skin colored. I guess. Um, I got my snares. Anyways, it's really easy to see. And you know what? The, the LED lights are pretty dang bright. So that's, that's an added bonus. Really easy to see and tell where things are. And that's very helpful when starting out for sure. Especially like as a you know, when I set this up, it's really nice to visually be able to see where things are. Plus, if you're playing live or whatever, you know, and you're kind of like standing, walking around it, you don't have to think as much. You don't have to, oh, okay, one, two, three, four, five. There's my bass drum. You just look. Okay, blue. It's good. You know where your hand is going. All right, so now that you saw the beautiful colors, oh, that's too bright. That's all custom mappable. In the software, you can literally pick the colors a uh, bunch of crazy stuff. If enough people comment and watch this video, I will make a uh, tutorial on how to do that if you want to do it yourself. Because this isn't that much money. That's the other cool thing. This is like a $100 keyboard. I think it's really great. These feel pretty cheap. I'm mostly going to be using these. These feel pretty sturdy. They're pretty small. I've got gorilla hands, but it doesn't seem to be a problem right now. I don't think you can adjust the velocity curve on these, which would be cool if you could, but I don't think you can. But it, you know, which basically is meaning like if I wanted them to be uh, less sensitive, because, you know, like my hand is you know, about as big as this keyboard. It would be nice if I could make them less sensitive. Another, that's another cool thing. The drum machine in here has layering. You can hear that. You can hear the sound changing. The kick drum is literally kicking harder, which I love, but it's kind of hard for me to do that when I'm playing. I have to press really lightly. But you can do it. And if you're a kid like you probably are, it won't be a problem, you know. I got farm boy hands, you know. I'm smacking on these. <laughs> but that's okay. Because it still works. If I'm really careful, I can make it work. It's 
So, so that's that. All right, so that's the drum sounds and the custom mapping stuff that I'm doing. Now, these up here are custom mappable too, and I just figured out you can literally custom map these knobs to almost anything on here. So for example, if you wanted to switch the memory with one of these, you can totally do that. So this is actually, I usually have this on the floor. I have it up here right now so you can see it because I'm a sweetheart, but usually it's on the floor. So little things that you can control in here, you could just, you can custom map here. There's, I think, eight custom mappable MIDI assignments for this specific loop station, which is plenty. I mean, I haven't ran out of stuff, so... You can also plug in an external foot switch, which I have custom mapped to delete track one and track two. I got a kind of weird setup. I got track one here, track two here, and this is an all start, all stop. And then my external foot switch uh, deletes tr the left and right track, or not the left and right track, track one and track two. But the MIDI capability is a whole different set of things that you can do. So. Mapping these does not take up any of those slots. Mapping these is just you're sending the MIDI notes to here like a keyboard. And it's awesome because you don't have to worry about it taking away any of your MIDI spots. Uh, that's what I'm calling them officially, MIDI spots. So anyways, so you can loop, which I like to do. I love looping. that boys and girls is looping that's how it's done <laughs> that could have been a little better in time but whatever you know takes practice um so that is so also it you might be wondering how the heck am i getting the sounds into here back into the looper pedal that's this little device right here you basically that's that's kind of some routing again if enough people watch this video and comment on it uh i will make a tutorial about whatever you want as long as you know i'm getting a good chunk of views because uh i only got so much time in a day you know i got a full-time job i got two furry dogs <laughs> real busy guy um so it's basically being routed out of here, back into here, and then out again. Uh, anyways, uh, different, long, interesting video for you guys to watch potentially in the future. So what I just did there is I looped it into two separate tracks. Track one. Track two. Sounds pretty cool. So back to these things. So I mapped these two little suckers right here to um, control the volume of track one and track two. And track one. Which is awesome. That's just something that I thought in my head. I'm like, I wonder if it can do it, and it can. So that's the thing. That's really cool. That's going to come in handy, especially if I'm playing live and I just want quick control instead of having to, you know, go all the way down here and turn this, which would be fine. But I don't, you know, I don't feel like, you know, getting on my hands and knees and then pressing knobs when I can just do it right here. Okay, so that's that part. This here, I've got controlling the drum reverb. So zero to 100, which is so freaking cool. So no reverb. 50%. Get a little reverb and then full reverb. No reverb. Oops. Oh, I see. So it's kind of like it has the reverb. Over. Okay. Yeah. Never mind. No reverb. Full reverb. So if you want a bigger, bigger kind of a sound. Be 
beautiful. More reverb, more fun. I usually keep it about uh, halfway, maybe even a little bit less. It's good to have a little bit of reverb. Um, again, I'm just kind of getting started with this. Uh, so here's another crazy thing. Yeah, you can control, since it's all in here, you can do send controls to the drum machine and you could send controls to the loops too, which I have a loop effect on. It sounds better if you actually have melodic stuff going on in here, but there's little things like scatter and beat repeats. And I have this assigned to decide which, um, which type of effect, which I didn't even know was possible. I thought it was going to be like, you can choose two effects effect number one, maybe a beat repeat, and then effect two, like a vinyl flick. But no, when you, there's a minimum and a maximum and it filters in between those. So you can actually, this controls a bunch of different stuff. So I forget what my first one was. I think it was like a scatter. This controls on and off, which is on this side, it's off on this side, it's on. Uh, Cause there's only two controls there on and off. But it totally worked. I didn't even think it would. But here's a little example, and I'll filter through a couple of different effects. You'll, you'll figure it out. Off. And on. Three, four. Do a different one. That one's pretty cool. Go to a different one. And then final play. So, if you're playing live, you can do some fun stuff like. Anyways, that's just a little example of me using my knobs. Now, once you record that, that's an audio track. That is set. You cannot change the drum sounds at all. There is a drum machine in here, which is also really highly customizable. There's like drum fills and there's A and B sections and you can turn on and off uh, like bass drum, snares. Like it's, I had a, a, a thing with a foot pedal going for a little bit that was, it was fun for a second, but you're kind of, the drum patterns are hard to, you know, switch around and you got to kind of remember what they are. It was fun. You can do it. It's cool. But I decided I like doing live drums better. So let's delete these. No, I like these. Is there anything else I can do with them? No. All right. Goodbye. That's what looping's all about. Live performing. That's what looping is about for me anyways performing live. This is going to be a nice long video. Um, drum sounds. Okay. So another crazy thing that I found there is, like I said, there's like 10 different drum sounds, which is basically, so right now I have it on like a nice kind of a tight, bright, uh, drum kit. Um, sounds good got two different snares but say you want to do some more electronic type of stuff well let me show you a little fangled thing that I figured out take this knob scooch it over now you've got more electronic drums That's, this is kind of like a hybrid, sort of. It's a little realistic, but you've got like, you know, a pretty deep bass sound, some more synthy sounding kind of stuff going on in here, but then there's some kind of natural. This one's called Dance Beats, I think. That's my favorite. Uh, I thought it sounded good. The one thing is sometimes they repeat the drums. They don't put a different one. So those are two different MIDI CCs, but you know, I can live with that. That's how real digital drum machines are anyways. 
Uh, they don't technically have, you know, like layering and whatever. But some of the sounds do on this, which is awesome. I love layering. It, gives, it makes it sound a lot more realistic. Which again goes back to like this is one of the best, most simple setups because it is just really quick before I get into the different drum sounds. It is so difficult to just find like a simple, here, let me show you something. This is an old thing right here. I thought this was the answer for a while. It's got eight pads on it and it has, you can put your own sounds in here. This thing is riddled with problems, though. It was cool, but it just never worked. And I look up, this has so many problems. The pads were great on it. You had, like, reverb and everything. But eight is honestly not even enough, I figured out. That's another reason why this is cool. It's got whatever eight plus eight is. 16. Okay, it's got 16. Um, anyways, this was a cool thing. There's a video out there about it, and you can watch that if you're interested in this. Do, don't buy this, though. It's a freaking nightmare. But I, I spent a lot of time searching for just, I wanted literally this, you know? And I just, I couldn't find anything out there that was just like a hardware unit. They, the Roland has some things. There's those drum machines. There's a couple of arrangers. They have the drum pads on them and they have really great sounds. Um, but something this small was hard to find. And also those machines are really expensive. They cost a ton of money. And not a ton of money. They're, you know, if you're into that stuff, it's, you know, I think worth it. But like, I'm not a professional, like drum finger drumming, whatever. Um, you know, they're a little bit pricey and they do so much, like way more than I need. I just, I literally just wanted a finger drumming machine. And this is, I think, the best thing on the market, even though if you have to do a little customization, it totally works. And I love looping, so it works out great. Um, so yeah, you got 16 sounds and that's awesome. So going into the drum sounds. So I mapped this to... Um, and again, I thought I was only going to have two options for drums. No, it's, there's a minimum and a maximum and it filters in between those sounds. Basically what I'm saying is that this controls and filters between like maybe six different sounds. Let me show you what this is. So this is my first sound. Just to example, a couple sounds, and then I move it a little bit. Maybe more of a rock drum drum kit. And move it a little bit more. That's a little more. Well, that's kind of a rock kit too. <laughs> you can just slap a bunch of stuff. That's interesting. Not sure what that one is. Oh, this is like a uh, one of those white hipster instruments. But it's still, so a cajon, I think, is what that was. But you still get a couple of drum sounds in there. Um, that's 808 right there. So there's an 808 kit, which that's rolling all day, you know. That's kind of cool. It's like a reverse symbol. Mm -hmm. 
Awesome. Cool stuff. Really awesome sounds. Now, all right, back recording again. I hope it wasn't not recording too long because that was good. That was that was gold right there. I'll just I'll just make a loop <laughs> of me doing this while the video's not. So those are the drum sounds. Uh, if for whatever reason it wasn't recording, basically I was using this knob to control the sounds. All right, let's go to dance beats. Now, as far as the sounds go, so these are in channel 10, I think. So you don't get, so which is cool, You it's specifically channel 10 controls the drums on here. Um, that way, I don't know if you want this to do something else. I guess you could do that. Um, but yeah, channel 10 is the drums. When I first was doing this, I'm like, oh, it's just going to have like, you know, eight drum sounds or whatever. No, this thing is stacked with complete drum sounds, several octaves worth. So let me go to channel 10. So now these are controlling channel 10. If you wanted to, you could just control drums like this, you know. That's how I learned. I've already forgotten how to do that because now I'm used to these. You technically have access to more sounds. Anyways, so there is just a ton of drum sounds in each kit. Uh, let's go to, um, let's go to like the standard, the pretty standard kit. So this is like really low. I'll just show you real quick. I'm moving up octaves. Okay, so about right there. That's got to be like a full 88 keyboard uh, level of drum sounds. There is so many. If I ever wanted to, if I wanted to go into some... Uh, bongo stuff which you'd have to take space up here uh, but if I ever really really want to I can just switch to channel 10 here which is another cool thing that this thing does and also bravo on the auxiliary midi jack I freaking love auxiliary midi they're so small and simple and it connects right here too bravo for both companies boss rc500 and novation for mini midi cable capability um but yeah bongo time is kind of fun Those are the best sounds. I don't know at what point that became a standard note. There's like, a, there's standard, if you don't know anything about MIDI drums, there's kind of a standard on drum MIDI mapping, which is really cool. It makes it easy because I've got like over here, you can't see it, but I've got a Yamaha keyboard. It's got just about the same mapping. So bass drum, I got to be on the right octave here. Bass drum, snares, hi hat, um, ride cymbal, toms are usually here. Uh, those are pretty universal, but like I said, I don't know at what point. Oops. I don't know at what point the whistle became <laughs> B3 or B4, or whatever it is. Anyways, something I noticed. Uh, but yeah, anyways, these, so every single sound has different sounds. There's so many sounds. It's ridiculous. Let me go to like an electronic one. Uh, the 808.
you can even this stays on the channel 10 which is cool so these are separate so if you wanted to to go like if you wanted to go a little higher here those three probably you can do stuff like that and again every single set has some of the sounds are repeated that one is repeated a lot there's a shaker in here somewhere okay that's a bit much but um yeah tons of sounds tons and tons and tons and tons of sounds and i've got a full control right here but to the far left i have i basically have the two that i really want so this light one kind of a natural sounding and then a dance kind of a kind of a set i liked the clap in there and i like the combination with the snare Good stuff right there. Um, what else, man? Uh, yeah, I just kind of wanted to show off the stuff that I've been working on because I, I think that I've, like I said, I've been wanting this for such a long time. Nobody has it. Doesn't exist. I would love there to just be a hardware version of this with that gut of drum sounds, but I think that's asking a bit much, you know? Because in a company, like, I, I, that would literally be for me. <laughs> That's about it. There's not a lot of people that are going to want this. I think with the combination with the looper pedal, though, that's a lot more interesting. Because a lot of people like looping. And then the fact that you get the drum sounds here. And I think it's kind of one of those things. Anybody can finger drum. Yeah, it's going to take practice to get in time. But I did, a le I did some lessons with a kid. Um, with the Akai MPK Mini Play, and uh, I was giving him lessons, and he, I'm pretty sure, yeah, he was getting the drum stuff down pretty dang quickly. He was young, too. He was a little kid. But, you know, just a little bit of... Okay, maybe, maybe simpler than that, even. You know, just stuff like that. Anyone can finger drum. Again... A tutorial if you guys desperately so want one um, yeah you can control loops all day though I generally keep this on channel one that way it's not doing anything and I can kind of rest my hand on here that's comfortable for me if I'm standing I'm kind of you know kind of coming from up here but yeah just a quick little tutorial you know if you want to loop drums um, you know it's good to just start with something to keep time at first I, I love the tambourine sound I think it's killer on this you know just a little bit of three four and then add some other stuff then maybe on track two you can do some bass drum three four oops snare in there okay so that's the problem when there is the two of the same snare you get a little bit of phasing going on so you got to be kind of careful with that uh, for you finger drummers out there ah what did I do Get a little bit of effects going here. back in yeah 
good. Maybe you can get some bongos. really good bongo player. <laughs> oh, that's why I enjoy this. And then bada bing, bada boom, you're set. All right, I think that concludes today's video. I hope it wasn't too shaky up there or anything, but uh, yeah, that's some that's some good stuff. It's just something I wanted to share because it's something I've wanted a long time. I wish somebody had this video before and had this idea, but you know what? You know, not everyone's as creative as me. <laughs> Just kidding. Yeah, so that's it. Pretty powerful stuff. Again, I've been working on some things on my Bone Zone music channel. This is my Bone Zone studio channel where I share studio stuff and do things and, you know, make videos for fun because that's what I like to do. I like making videos. So, anyways, I will see you all again in the Bone Zone. I know it's been a little bit since I've uploaded. I just haven't really had anything to upload. Uh, but this is kind of new, new setup thing going on. Um, yeah, that's basically it. I uh, will see you all again in the Bone Zone, and have a good one. Enjoy finger drumming. Goodbye. <laughs>